Hey everybody, it's Ecap here, and in this video, we'll be talking about the state of patch 9.1 via the PTR. Haven't done one of these videos in quite a while. There has been a lot of changes since then. Nothing like hugely major in its own right, uh, but definitely uh, some, when you add them all together, there's quite a lot of changes, I suppose. So uh, I'm going to cover three topics mostly in this video. We're going to talk about Torgas. We're going to talk about all the different currencies. Uh, that are in Corthia in, in patch 9.1. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the shards of domination conflicting possibly with the legendary gear. I've been holding off making this video hoping they fix it, but it still hasn't been fixed yet. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit as well. Uh, first, I did want to start with a little bit of a prologue, just um, talk, hyping up Corthia, frankly, because Corthia is actually really good. Um, the last time I did make a video, I had done a lot of Corthia, and I'm like, wow, this is shaping out to be really, really good. It was like a couple weeks after some of the major... YouTubers were talking about it, saying it was very bare bones. Just a couple weeks later, it was a lot more than bare bones, and it was actually quite good. And now I can say, you know, weeks after that, it's actually quite, quite good. So if you liked Najatar, for example, um, just the way that worked. Now, I think it's better than Najatar personally, but I think that's a good comparison because it has like similar catch-up gear. Obviously, it's not Benthic gear. Some people have been calling it Benthic gear, but it doesn't have like the affixes on it. This is not going to be mandatory rating gear or anything. It is just catch-up gear, uh, but it's very easy and pretty much straightforward to do uh, and upgrade, and it upgrades all the way up to uh, 233. So it is, you know, it's it's good it's really good catch up gear frankly so and that's what a lot of people like to see um, and there's just really good stuff there there's all kinds of rares and chests the chests can give you good rewards too very low chance to give you like uh, conduit upgrades for example which is really really good uh, and a nice change all kinds of rare spawns there's the collection stuff there's all the achievement stuff and that you would expect from a new zone but the zone is actually just quite good and I did want to hype it up and give it some credit. Because uh, Corthia is definitely a huge improvement on the Maw overall. And obviously, we're still going to be spending some time in the Maw as well via Corthia. Uh, but Corthia is actually quite good. So definitely a good job there uh, for them. Even if I think even if it went live now, it would probably pretty much be fine. So um, I'm, pr I'm pretty happy with Corthia. So let's go ahead and talk about the three main topics, though. Uh, the first one's going to be Torghast. So the last time I did any video on Torghast, I was pretty much hyping that up at that point. Uh, I liked the way it worked with the uh, the um, streak bar, basically, you know, rewarding you for going fast. Now, in the, even in this new system, you still want to go as fast as you can. But this, I and the complaint was that the streak bar going down was like giving players anxiety, like it, it was a speed run or whatever. Um, and so they did end up changing that. So I was able to do it fairly easily, just in my, you know. Mythic Nathria gear uh, on whatever layer, the layer 12, I think is the highest. And I was able to do it pretty easily there, uh, even with the streak bar. Now, they made it easier, so I was like, I'm going to go in and see just how easy it is. However, I ran into a new problem, and I think that this might be a big issue if there's not enough people testing it. So like me, I haven't tested this in weeks um, at this point, and if there's not enough people testing this, this could be bad. So they added these affixes, these torments, into Torghast, and for the most part, they're fine. They're just like Mythic Plus affixes somewhat easier in many ways uh, but I ran into a combination that just did not quite work I was in SCOTUS halls and I had a, a fix where the non-elite mobs did 25% more damage which is a, a good amount on its own and then on top of that though they also gained raging when they hit 30 or 35 percent whatever it's similar to the mythic plus affix so basically as soon as any and you know some mobs you have to pull more than one at a time and if, if they are hurt, uh, they are just crushing you. Uh, like one of the crossbow, so think of the, the Moss Sworn, the ones that have the crossbow. Um, they do a, a ability called Critical Shot. When they were enraged, it was hitting me for 80% of my health bar. And it was just not manageable because uh, there was a pull of three. It was two crossbow guys and a melee guy. And it just wasn't really doable. I basically, I think I killed like two of them before I died by, by using everything I possibly could. And then just had to die and come back and kill the other one. It, I ended up having to quit. I did submit this bug report to Blizzard. Uh, but my main my main uh, point of talking about this is I, I hope enough people are testing it. If you do have the PTR client um already especially like i know people aren't going to want to go download it but please go into torgas test this see if you get some crazy affixes that do not work together and make sure you report these because we do not want these to go live i mean uh 
if you actually want World of Warcraft to do well, you do not want these to go live because this is immediately going to be a huge thing. To say I'm not the Torghast is awful and I'm never going to do it again. Uh, screw this game, especially like casual players would say that. Obviously, you know, Mythic Raiders are just going to str struggle through it or whatever. But um, yeah, so let's let's get these bad affix combos or just worthless affixes kicked out. But the only way that's going to happen is if people are testing it. So. I just hope enough people are, in fact, testing it and noticing some of these bad combinations. Uh, next up, let's talk about the currencies in Quarthia. So there's like, or and in 9.1 in general. So we have the Soul Cinders. That's basically the new Soul Ash. We're going to use this to upgrade our legendaries. You can also use this to purchase items, unlike Soul Ash, uh, like conduit upgrades and stuff. Uh, it's, a, it's quite expensive to do so, but... It is an option to do if you just, you know, you keep running Torghast, you can keep upgrading your stuff. Uh, that's an option for you. And whereas before you had to keep doing the Maw to keep upgrading your stuff with Stygia, uh, now you can choose to just keep running Torghast, upgrade your stuff. So that is a little bit of a difference there. It is instanced versus non-instanced open world. So, it, you know, d different players like to do different things there. So that is good. Um, Soul Cinders is basically Soul Ash. Fairly straightforward enough as long as you know what Soul Ash is from 9.0. Number two, we have Stiggy Numbers. So these are uh, to upgrade your Shards of Domination. So these gems, these new gems that come, uh, that are mostly for raiding, uh, but can also be used for out other things as well. So these embers can drop from the bosses inside the raid, and you can also get some of them by doing like the weekly Corthia stuff. So like it's like a weekly reward. Think about the Visions of Nazoth or something, how you would get like the big weekly reward uh, for the weekly assault or whatever. <laughs> and then you have the two bi-weekly assaults. Uh, well, for the weekly one, uh, you get these Siggy numbers as well. These upgrade these shards up. We don't know for sure what the final say is going to be on the shards. Are they going to be raid only? Are they going to be the bonus for raid only, which is the way it currently is? The bonus is only for the raid, but the actual gems are usable everywhere. So basically the, the the set bonus would only be for the raid, but the gems could be used everywhere. We don't know for sure yet how that's going to shake out. It could just be the way it is now, right? That could just be the way it's intended to be and the way it will be. Um, but as of now, the way to upgrade these are with these Stygian Embers, and you either need to do the raid to upgrade them, or you need to um, just do your weekly Corthia until you have enough to upgrade them. Um, I'm not sure how many of those you would have to do in order to upgrade all your gems, uh, but we'll see uh, exactly how that plays out. And it wouldn't surprise me if they were if you, they eventually allowed you to purchase them, Siggy numbers with um, maybe like the Soul Cinders again from Torghast or something like that. Uh, but we'll see how that all shakes out. Uh, but that is what sticky numbers are and what they're for. They're for upgrading the gems. Now I will say the gem upgrading, it doesn't like add like a tremendous power level to upgrade them. Uh, but obviously if you're min maxing, you're going to want to upgrade every single gem that you can to the highest level that it can be upgraded to. If you don't care though, you won't be missing out on too much. If you're like, well, I just don't raid. So I'm just not going to upgrade my gems. You won't be missing out too much then. If you want to be the very highest end, you probably will have to do so. And hopefully they do put something in to where, like I said, the, the soul cinders from Torghast, you can use them to purchase the embers or something like that. Um, we also, uh, the, the final currency we have is like the catalog uh, research. So this is like the generic Stygia type currency. Stygia still exists, by the way. Uh, we're still like kind of maw-ish and we are going back to the maw as well uh, during all this. So we still have the Stygia, but catalog research is a new thing where you find fragments and you take it back to the new vendor guy, uh, kind of like Venari. And he'll turn this into catalog research for you and get you'll get rep and stuff like that with him, similar to Venari once again. And the catalog research allows you to purchase catch-up gear, uh, items that make Corthia easier and better, which is really good. So we had those items as well from Venari. There's even more of these, and they're actually a little bit cooler uh, from this new guy. And so you'll be able to use that, and then you'll be able to also purchase conduits and socket upgrades as well with catalog research. So there's all kinds of things to do with catalog research. Uh, just how you, how you can do it with the other things as well. And there, so you can purchase, so let's talk about sockets and the uh, conduits. You can purchase them with catalog research. You can uh, get them via adamant vaults. You can get them from like chests and rares in Corthia. And so there's all kinds of ways to get them. And I believe is it, it might be soul cinders as well that you can purchase them with. I believe I said that already. Uh, so 
Uh, there's all kinds of ways to get them this time, which is actually quite good. So people shouldn't struggle as bad to get them, and they should get them much earlier in the patch if uh, you did grind them all out throughout the course of 9.0. Um, uh, you should be able to get them out quite quicker uh, than this patch, I would imagine. So those are all the currencies. There is one other currency. Um, it's like this legendary resource that's also used to upgrade your legendaries, I guess. Um, not much has been talked about this resource, but uh, I got one from our chest. I know that's very rare, but it can happen. So these kind of seem like, uh, you know, just rare items. I believe it. I, I'm not sure if they still are. I should have looked before I logged off uh, if they're BOE or not. Uh, at one point they were BOE, so you were actually able to buy them. But, you know, I got one in, you know, like 30 minutes of gameplay myself. So they can't be too hard to get. Uh, obviously, some people are just never lucky, usually me included. Uh, but... Uh, they shouldn't be too awful bad to get if you're willing to just go on Corthia. And if nothing else, you can go on Corthia on, if they are BOE, go on Corthia on an alt, get it completely catch up gear to 233, and uh, mail all those uh, legendary things that you get for upgrading a legendary to your main character, and you should be good to go um, uh, as far as that goes. If you want to actually maximize your time in Corthia, of, of course, which is what I will do. Since there is this really good catch up gear, I will send all my alts. Uh, to Corthia and they will have their nice Corthia gear and then whatever ones I feel like playing to you know heroic raid or mythic raid or PvP on, uh, they can upgrade their gear from there. But I'm gonna go get all this really sweet Corthia gear on all my alts. Uh, so I am looking forward to that quite a bit. All right. So the last thing we're gonna talk about here is uh, the, the Shards of Domination possibly conflicting with your legendary gear. There has been some videos out in this past week uh, kind of I wouldn't say doom saying because I think I think most people think that they will change this, but maybe not. I mean that's just the way it is. So let me kind of give you a more nuanced uh, take on this. Right now, if you wanted to completely maximize yourself, min maxing, right? You would want to wear five pieces of gear uh, and wear a three set bonus of either frost, unholy, or blood uh, shards of domination gems. So that's just a uh, let's just talk about blood gems or for uh, just to use an example a dps blood gem an endurance blood gem and a finesse blood gem let's just think of it like that because that's the way the conduits work so a dps a, a potency an endurance and a finesse blood gem i now get the blood gem socket bonus or a set bonus so i have the set bonus i have the potency uh blood gem and then i'm also going to wear one unholy potency and one frost potency and that's going to min max my damage right there by doing that uh in this you know example blood might not be the best one but if for this example we'll say it is and so that's going to min max my damage now however there are only currently five slots that you can have um these domination pieces in and they they vary slightly based on if you're plate leather or whatever um and it's very very possible and very very likely that one of these could coincide with where you have your legendary in which case at this current state you have to make a choice do i want to have all five of my uh shards or do i want to wear this legendary on this slot so what most people are saying is i'm going to have to recraft my legendary to a slot that doesn't have one of these shards on it and they have gone uh to the effort to make it so that is possible making it so um things that only had options of where these uh where these shards lie now they can put them on like a ring or something like that, something that doesn't have a shard of domination. So a lot of people are saying, well, they're just expecting us to remake it. That is possible. They could be doing that. Um, but there are many ways that they could fix this. They could allow you to put a shard of domination into a legendary piece of gear. Um, and then when the next patch rolls out, just when you upgrade it during that patch, it just deletes the shard of domination. So in like 9.2, Shards of Domination, they don't want you using them anymore. So when you upgrade your legendary gear, uh, it just deletes the shard or something like that. Uh, and so that that would be one way to go about it and, you know, or just make them not work in 9.2, frankly. So they could allow you to add a Shard of Domination to your legendary. That would be good. Maybe you purchase it with Soul Cinders since it's a legendary item, or maybe it's just some other way you obtain it during Corthia and you're allowed to add it to your legendary that way. That's one way to fix it. Uh, people have talked about having a vendor that allows you just to refund everything from your legendary. Uh, however, there is a gold aspect of that with the actual crafting piece. Um, so then, and I don't like that idea of refunding it. Instead, there other people have said maybe you can just transfer it to another thing. 
Um, at that point, I believe the way the system works, it would still require you to actually purchase the item that you're transferring it to, which is still much better than farming everything else. So like if I want to transfer my chest to a ring piece, for example, I would still have to buy the shadow gas ring most likely if they did this and then just transfer all the stats, or the same stats, the same legendary power onto the ring. Obviously the ring has more secondary stats, so it would have to scale correctly, but you would transfer it over from chest to ring in my case. And that would be one way to do it as well. So there's all kinds of ways they can get around it. And I hope they do because this is really a problem that th this is. So I, I usually kind of stick up for Blizzard in some ways. But in this case, this is a problem that they created. So I hope that they offer a solution to the players as well. So that's my take on it. There's all kinds of ways to fix it. And we'll just hope that they do. Here's hoping for patch 9.1 to come out pretty quickly here. Uh, at this point, I'm thinking the first week of July. I was saying the last week of June. But I do. I kind of feel like they want to give uh, TPC Classic like a full month. To shine in the light and so i'm kind of thinking the first week of july now but we'll see uh we'll know here in the next few weeks for sure because <laughs> they'll give a two-week notice as they usually do so yeah as always i do ask you to please subscribe to the channel because it helps me out so much and other than that everybody have a good one